Okay, your nervous system, your brain and your spinal cord are called the central nervous system. And then all the other stuff that feeds information into the brain and spinal cord is your peripheral nervous system. What we would consider our nerves. Brain and spinal cord, central nervous system, everything else peripheral nervous system, outside the center. Without the peripheral nervous system, your brain and spinal cord would have no clue as to what was going on outside the body or even inside the body. Your brain is locked up in your skull. Your spinal cord is locked in the vertebral foramen. All right, so the job of the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, is to basically get the information that's coming in, analyze it, process it, integrate it, in other words, you've got visual information coming in and auditory information coming in. It's got to put those things together, integrate it into a whole. And then send out motor commands. So receive sensory information, analyze that, process it, and then decide if you need to do anything about it. Send out motor commands. So the job of the peripheral nervous system is to carry the sensory information in and carry the motor information out. Now, uh, the words afferent and efferent, now I say afferent and efferent, it's supposed to afferent and efferent, because if I said afferent and efferent, I'd have no idea what I said. So I tend to mispronounce these words, to be clear. Afferent is the same thing as sensory. So you've got your brain and your spinal cord. Afferent is going into. Efferent is going out. Big efferent exit. So you can say the afferent or the sensory portion. Or you can say the efferent slash motor portion. <coughs> so in general, the way the nervous system works is you have, in your periphery, you have what are called receptors. They detect different types of sensations, different types of stimuli. And then the sensory neurons carry that information into the central nervous system. The brain or the spinal cord, we must both integrate, process, analyze that information. And then they generate motor commands that travel out to an effector. So receptors detect stimuli, effectors do something about it, produce the response. Afferent brings the sensory information in. Efferent carries the motor information. Now, you've got all kinds of receptors. Don't they scan in the um, in lab, right? The integumentary system. And you had the Merkel cells, and the Vicinian corpuscles, and all that kind of cool stuff. Okay, those are different types of receptors. Those would be under what would be called our somatic, our body sensory receptors. Uh, touch, pressure, pain, temperature, those are all kind of the general or somatic senses. One of my favorite types of, of uh, somatic receptors is called a proprioceptor. Close your eyes. Put your hands straight up in the air. Everybody close your eyes. Put your hands straight up in the air. Both hands. Now, with your eyes closed, take your left hand and touch the tip of your nose. The other left. Now, you didn't have to see that, right? You know where your nose is. You know where your hands are. Yeah, you can, you can put them down. Right? That's proprioception. I'm totally uncoordinated, you know, and as long as I've not been drinking. I know where my, my right hand knows where my left hand is. That's proprioception. These are sensors. These are receptors that are in uh, your joints and your muscles that, that measure the relative position of those things. 
physical. So that's examples of your somatic sensory receptors. Yeah, your special receptors, special sensory receptors, that's, you know, smell, vision, hearing, balance. Those are specially designed receptors that take those stimuli and send those electrical signals to your brain, and your brain interprets that as vision or hearing or smell. So those are kind of easy to understand. Special senses versus general or somatic body senses. Now, Visceral sensory receptors, a lot of times we're not consciously aware of these. A lot of times this information never gets to our conscious part of our brain. But that information still is sent to the brain. It's still integrated. It's still processed. These would be things like blood pressure, how full your stomach is, how full your bladder is. Now, if those sensations get strong enough, then a signal is sent to the conscious part of our brain that says, go oh, find a bathroom now. But many of these visceral sensations we're not consciously aware of. I mean, there's no, I can tell you if my blood pressure was up or down, right? But there are sensors in the wall to my blood vessels that are detecting that. All right, so those are three different types of receptors based on the type of sensation. Now, your um, efferent division, the motor division, <laughs> it's basically divided into two branches. You have what's called the somatic nervous system. And that is the efferent division that carries motor commands to your skeletal muscles. The commands that go to every other effector in your body is called the autonomic nervous system. Now, in general, we think about the somatic nervous system is the one that we have conscious control of or voluntary control of because we control, for the most part, our skeletal muscles. Now there's an exception. Your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is controlled automatically. I mean, you don't have to think, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. But you can override that, right? Because you can say, take a breath. You can hold your breath. By the way, you cannot hold your breath and die. You'll pass out and start breathing again. Now, this is okay as long as you're not underwater. If you're underwater, you're screwed. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> which is why you grabbed it. We'll talk about that in a So, for the most part, we have voluntary, conscious control over the contractions of our skeletal muscles. We cannot tell our heart to speed up and slow down consciously, unless you do some kind of weird yogi, meditation, biorhythm, Thing, you know. We can't tell our sweat glands to sweat. We can't tell our, our parathyroid gland to release parathyroid hormone. All of that stuff is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Now, not automatic, autonomic. Somatic controls skeletal muscles, autonomic controls everything else. And it's unconscious or involuntary. For the most part, we are not aware of that. Okay? The nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, right? Yeah. Now, the central nervous system is just what? Two organs. Brain, brain, brain and spinal cord, right? Okay. Everything else is peripheral. The peripheral is divided into the afferent division, which is afferent means what? Yeah, the stuff that's coming in. So what do we call that? Receptors. Well, it's receptor yeah. sending input sensations, right? The sensory division, afferent or sensory division. And the output division, or the efferent division. Input, afferent, sensory, output, efferent, motor. The efferent division, if you're sending out information to skeletal muscles, we call that the somatic If you're sending information to anything else, we call that autonomic. All right. One thing we'll get to eventually, okay, the autonomic nervous division is divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Basically, your sympathetic autonomic nervous system is the fight and flight. You either fight the bear or run away from the bear. Mm -hmm. 
Parasympathetic is your rest and digest, or your feed and breathe. 